Welcome to the How to Write a Book podcast, the show that helps you plan, write, and publish your book, even if you're a beginner or just feel like one. Now, for your host, she's written over a dozen books and helps others bring their books to life. Here she is, Maciel. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is NaNoWriMo Day 13. What is up? Yes, you guys. Okay, so I am just so excited because I'm wrapping up this other interview episode with Josh Kelly, who is a ghostwriter and a developmental editor. And oh my gosh, you guys are going to love this episode. Oh, so just so many great things, uh, just juicy knowledge all over the place. He has done um, a traditionally published book and then he's shopping another book. And the obstacles that he has to go through to write, I think that a lot of you are going to like find that and be like, that's exactly what I'm dealing with. And then to hear how he faces it and how he uses it is fantastic. So um, that episode will be dropping next week. I'm so excited. Um, I just like, I just got so pumped up. It was, it's awesome. So y'all, we are in day 13 and, um, if one thing you're going to notice, right, is that I'm probably going to sound like a broken record and it's like this. So as we go into our writing, we're pretty much always going to have this this thought, this nasty thought that's like, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you're, you're writing is terrible, et cetera, et cetera. And even after like a dozen books, y'all, I still struggle with this. Now, if you're struggling with this and it's your first book, hey, it's totally normal. So that's one of the things I just really want to reiterate with my podcast is that this thought, it's going to continue to uh, like attack you, but that doesn't mean that you have to give in. That doesn't mean that you have to give up. You know, that voice is totally a liar. It's just a gosh darn liar and you kick it in the shin until it's a go away, right? <laughs> so so the, the purpose of my podcast is to kind of like repeat this mantra because, you know, it's really interesting in like brain science. They, they say like in order to like rewire a habit or rewire a thought, you have to continually repeat it. You have to like say it over and over and over again or do a habit over and over and over again until this sticks. So if you've always thought you're a bad writer and you continue to tell yourself that, then it's going to ring true for you internally. But if you start like believing in yourself and you start um, recognizing where these toxic thoughts are coming from, you know, disguised as writer's block, um, then you can start being like, oh, hey, like, okay, so I hear this voice that says like, oh, I'm a terrible writer, but wait, wait, wait. Okay. What do I know about this voice? Um, I know this voice is a liar. I know that this voice always lies to me. Um, and you know what can be also really helpful is naming this critical voice. Give it a name, you know, and give it, give it a person's name that, you know, you just, you feel like, oh man, like this is a name that I just, mm, right. Um, so like, for example, the name of my like internal antagonist, um, is Debbie. <laughs> Y'all. And Hey, all the Debras and Debbies out there. I love you guys. Seriously. No, really. I have a dear, dear friend named Debra and she's, oh my gosh, a godsend. She's a lawyer, a teacher, a philanthropist. Oh, she is God's gift to earth. Literally this woman is goals. She is goals. But for some reason, um, my internal antagonist is named Debbie, but uh, I named her Debbie a long time ago before I had met my friend, Deborah. And um, uh, so uh, what I was trying to say there was that go ahead and give it a name. And when you give it a name, you kind of start to identify it. It's a little bit more tangible. So this way, when you know your internal antagonist starts telling you these mean things, you recognize it for what it is. It's a bully. It's in the shadows. It's trying to get you down. So like, for example, like Debbie's trying to throw rocks at me. She's trying to tell me that I'm not good. And once you kind of give it that name, and it doesn't matter if it's a human name or some other name, it kind of separates you from this because when someone starts like yelling at you and profanities or they're bullying you, you kind of recognize that it's outside of you. You know, that person is literally in front of you telling you these things. And so there's like a little bit of separation. Um, but when it's coming from inside, it can feel tough to see the distinction between your true internal voice, your creative voice, your muse, and that bully inside of you that is probably has grown from self-criticism and no bad, bad events, um, experiences that didn't turn out right. So give it a name 
yell at it from the corner and be like, hey, I see you, Debbie. Get back in your corner. Get over there. I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to talk to you. I already told you this relationship is over. <laughs> so do that. And if once you give it a name, you might find that um, it's a little bit easier to recognize when it starts to talk negative to you. So going back to the repet- repetitive quotes and motivation that I'll be sharing with you, it's just to drive in that you all, we can continue to build new mindsets. And that is something that I've actually learned from my um, friend and business coach, Trish Blackwell. It's building new mindsets over and over and over again. And it really does help. It's just amazing. Okay. So now into the episode, long-winded motivation for you all. But sometimes when you're on fire, it's like the good Lord's like, hey, here's a message for you, right? You know, and, and that just goes to writing. Sometimes your like creative muse is like, here, there you go. Uh, or the universe, you know, like kind of whatever you believe in um, is like, boom, like there's, there's the magic and you just run with it. And those times are awesome. So awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. So um, for this episode, uh, we are tackling, like, it feels like I'm writing bad stuff and oh yeah. Right. Sometimes you're writing and it feels like you're writing bad stuff. Now, one of the just amazing quotes that I found recently, and this was actually from nanoremo.org. They had a pep talk from um, an author there, and they have like lots of stuff on there. But one of the authors uh, mentioned a quote by G.K. Chesterton, uh, which is, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. And now, y'all, I, I for a second, I was like, what? Like, I don't get it. Because, you know, I've actually heard the opposite of that quote, which is anything worth doing is worth doing like perfectly. Um, and when I said that, the stress and the pressure rises within me because I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, the only way that I can do this is if I do it perfectly. But then, you know, when this awesome writer shared this on NRIMO.org, which is anything worth doing is worth doing badly. I was like, what? So I looked it up, um, looked up some analogies um, on the Googler and um, it was so interesting to see what people were saying about this. So actually what they're trying to say and what probably GK Chesterton was trying to say was that if you are enjoying something, it's worth doing. And even if you suck at it, but it's bringing you that joy, then it is worth doing. So for example, if you go to run a marathon, um, or if you're just going out for a run, yeah, let's bring it really basic. So if you're going out for a run, but you just don't have good running form and you have a slow mile, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be running because if the running brings you joy and happiness and adrenaline um, and those positive dopamine um, cells that are going on in your body and also it's good for your health but you're you're like have poor running form that doesn't mean you should stop that doesn't mean like oh well you're not running perfectly therefore you shouldn't be running no right hey you like it. It's good for your body. Go for it. That's okay. If you like have a 23 minute mile, like I do, (laughs) you know, just do it. And the same thing can be said for that writing. It's like, you know, sometimes the accolades and the awards are distractions because yes, I mean, all that is awesome and they serve as validation. But even if you don't get that, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be writing. If you enjoy it, that doesn't mean that your writing is not worth it just because you're not getting those awards or things like that from it. It was a really interesting quote. And for me, what it said to me was that even if you stink, but the process of it is blissful to you, then that in itself is worth doing and aiming for income or you know, uh, awards or the contracts from the six big publishers. I mean, all that is awesome. But if you're going to give up because you're not getting that, then that's where that's so um, sad and um, and tragic because you're letting go of your dream. So keep moving forward. That was an awesome quote. I loved it. All right, y'all. Um, so if you need more information, go to www.nanarimo.org. And if you need writing help, you can get three free writers toolkits at blackheartedstudios.com and click on resources for writers. And we are having some tech issues. Um, my poor tech, tech uh, guy is um, under the weather. So hopefully sending good wishes your way. Um, so if you want that free writers toolkits and you can't see them, uh, feel free to email me at Masiel at BlackCardStudios.com. That's M-A-S-S-I-E-L at BlackCardStudios.com. Y'all, thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. 
Hey there, writer. Thank you for listening to the How to Write a Book podcast with your host, Maciel Valenzuela. If you like the show, we'd be happy if you left a review. For more information on writing and the writer's life, go to www.themaciel.com. That's www.themaciel.com. We'll see you on the other side.